Hey everybody, I'm Joey and today I'm back with another how to season steak experiment. Today we'll be cooking steak in a cast iron skillet using three different kinds of oil. So follow me and let's turn up the taste. Today we're cooking some superb strip steaks in a cast iron skillet on the stove. Now we hear all kinds of recommendations on the best oil to use with this method. So today we're going to put a couple of those to the test using avocado oil, canola oil, and good old fashioned lard, which we call meat nectar. Now when cooking with any fat or oil, its smoke point is the most important thing to know about your cooking oil right after its flavor. The smoke point is also known as its burning point, and it's important because once oil reaches past its burning point, the oil will begin to break down, and that breakdown will cause a heavy, thick smoke. And more importantly, it will leave your food with a bitter taste and your kitchen filled with tear-inducing, stinky smoke, and that's no bueno. So, now, butter has a very low smoke point at around 300 degrees Fahrenheit, and it's not a great option for searing steaks. The exception is clarified butter, which is also known as ghee, which has a much, much higher smoke point. Now, we're not using ghee today, but we are testing a wide variety of different oils with a range of smoke points, flavors, and their impact on the steaks. Lard has the lowest smoke point at around 374 degrees Fahrenheit, canola at 426 to 444 degrees Fahrenheit, and avocado oil right here has the highest smoke point at a whopping 520 degrees Fahrenheit. So let's get cooking. Today we're using these choice strip steaks, which we have hand cut ourselves from a large loin. It's an easy thing that you can do yourself right at home in your own kitchen, and it will save you a lot of money on steaks. If you want to find out how, Check out our video that we produced on the topic. It's again, a simple way that you can save a lot of money at home. Now, these steaks are about one and a quarter inch thick. Now, that is a perfect size for this test. We don't want them much thicker as it will require some level of indirect heat. Now, they are already salted using a half tablespoon of kosher salt. We wanna keep things consistent so that we can really measure the outcome across all methods. Also, I really want to isolate the impact of the oil on the steak. And so in line with this, um, although I would normally add butter or rosemary, today we're only using oil, steak, and salt. That's it. And we're going to cook all these steaks in different pans. Okay, so I am totally nerding out here, but I am genuinely interested in this result. So. We recently did an experiment on what's the best time to season steak, and we did a couple of different methods. We published a video on that, so you can go check it out for yourself, but what we found is, is that the best results happen when the steak is salted and rested at least an hour before cooking. Okay, and without further ado, let's go ahead and get this meat on that heat. Follow me. Okay, so here you can see we have three different cast iron skillets. We're getting them nice and hot, they take a few minutes to warm up and get to a consistent temperature. Once they rise up, we're going to go ahead and drop the oil. So it's going to be a little bit of a circus after that. As you can see, I'm going to try to cook three different steaks and three different skillets at the same time. And I'm doing this for you guys at home. So I hope you appreciate it. I hope you're learning something. But really more importantly, I'm very interested to find out the results myself. So once these come up in temperature, I'm going to drop the oil, then I'm going to drop the steaks. Follow me. Okay, so this is a little toy I have. As, as you might guess, I really do enjoy cooking steaks and I, I really wanna be uh, consistent so I can achieve, well, consistent results. So this is an infrared thermometer. And what this will tell you is the surface oil of the pan. So this is important. I wanna make sure that we're not exceeding the uh, smoke point of the oil itself. All right, so these pans are nice and hot and let's go ahead and first of all, we're gonna go ahead and drop our avocado oil sorry, avocado oil. There we go. You see it's nice and hot. A little bit. There we go. Next up, we have our canola oil right here. Put that in the pan. And finally, we have our lard right here. Go ahead and get that in. Okay, now let's get these steaks on.
All right, guys, well, that was a lot of fun. Um, it was a first time for everything. For me, that was the first time cooking three different steaks and three different cast iron skillets with three different types of oil. It was really kind of difficult to manage at least the middle temperature as it was a different burner than our other two units on the side. Now, before I cut them open, I just kind of want to talk about what I'm seeing here on the exterior, starting with the avocado oil, which again has the highest smoke point. This has a, a really nice crust. It's uniform end to end for the most part with uh, almost no black or burnt exterior at all. Um, here we have the canola oil. And again, I think this one just got a little hotter than what I intended. And I just want to address for one second what I call the myth of the blazing hot cast iron skillet. Yes, you do want it hot, but you don't need it all the way up at a 10. This one has some dark, uh, looks like they are a little frankly burnt around the edges. The interior of it has a very similar mahogany type look to this. Now over here on the lard, let's pick that up so you guys can see it. This does look like it has, you know, frankly, the most amount of burn. Um, you know, you can see it a little bit over here. And these are bad looking steaks. Um, cut them open, see how they look on the inside. Okay, there we go. It's probably closer to a medium well. Maybe not my most perfectly cooked steak, but again, I was cooking three at the same time, so. It is what it is. Here we go. We have a, again, a medium well. And here, this is actually, eh, we got three medium well steaks. And that's okay, it happens. I at least want to be honest with you guys about the results here, about the interior. So I think, you know, I, I think this is the result of just trying to do too much at once. But let's see how they taste. This is the steak cooked with lard. has a subtle flavor to it. Nothing really stands out about this steak. I mean, it's a good steak. It's a fine steak. I don't really have much to report in terms of the impact of the lard on the uh, flavor um, or the texture. I mean, because it is a little well done and, uh, not well done, a little medium well, and the exterior is a little darker than I would have liked it. It is, I think, a little bit chewier than I would have liked it, but I think it's more of a comment about the wellness than the actual oil. Next up, let's go ahead and give this uh, canola oil a try. Now this is what I have started cooking with a lot. I've used canola oil quite often. It has that medium range smoke point, medium high really. Hmm. I am tasting a little bit more of the canola oil, which almost to me has a vegetable oil type of flavor. It is uh, subtle, it's not robust, but whereas I would say, it, to my mouth, the lard had almost no impact on the actual flavor of the steak, although we can see it did on the crust. The canola oil does seem to have a little bit, not a greasiness, but you're picking up subtle notes of the canola oil. It's a good steak. Again, I'm a little disappointed. I cooked it medium well. I would have preferred a medium rare, uh, but again, doing too much. Let's try here our avocado oil. I definitely think it's the best of the three steaks, just in terms of flavor. They all had the same amount of salt, so it's not the salt. They all were at about the same temperature from a pan perspective. Um, but this one does, it has the best flavor. I don't know, maybe it's something about that avocado oil that's adding to the richness of the steak. I mean, it's really good. Hmm, there's a difference, guys. There really is. I mean, I think um, what I've learned from this is you know, when I'm cooking steaks in a cast iron skillet, I think from now on I'm only going to use avocado oil. It's not cheap. It, that small bottle I have cost about, it was about 10 bucks. Canola oil is substantially cheaper and, well, lard is free. As most of you know, lard is a byproduct of pork fat. It's what you see left over in the pan after you're done cooking bacon. Um, so, I mean, there definitely is an economic look to this. I mean, what worked for your pocketbook? I mean, they're all good steaks, right? I think. The one thing to really keep in mind is if you're gonna go with lard or heck, even canola oil, you're, you're really gonna to have to you know, be cognizant of the temperature of the pan. You're not gonna to wanna to go at a full 10. I, I didn't cook this one in avocado oil at a full 10, but I think it's really clear to me the impact of the higher smoke point. It 
produced a better looking exterior and frankly I do think, and it, these are subtle differences we're talking about, I think this is a richer tasting steak with the avocado oil. So it's good, it's great. Some of the things that I've learned from our How to Season Steak um, series is, you know, I'll be using avocado on a move forward basis, almost exclusively. Again, it comes down to economics. Canola oil I've used plenty in the past and turned out some really great steaks. If you've seen the video, you already know what we're talking about. If you haven't, you should go check it out. I mean, there really is a difference when you salt the steaks at least an hour before and an even bigger impact when you do it at least 24 hours before. I'd be really interested to see what happens when I take that steak that's salted uh, a day before, rest it for at least an hour prior to cooking, and then cooked in canola oil. I mean, to me, the uh, answer is clear. But you know what, don't take my word for it. I invite you to discover for yourself what you prefer, what works best for not only your palate, but your pocketbook. Our motto is cooking meat made easy, and that's just what we strive to show you in every single video we produce. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up like, or go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I know it's a really small thing for you guys to do, but it goes a really long way to support our channel here at Red Meat Lover so we can keep on cooking meat made easy. I'll see you guys next time. It's a great steak.